Let's replace the dodecagon with an equivalent clock face, four o'clock and eight o'clock. Let's call this position and all positions that are equivalent to it, S for the starting position. The first possibility is all three of our frogs can take one hop to the left. Now our frogs are at one, five, and nine o'clock. We can tell that this is an equivalent position because we don't really care where the frogs are on the clock except in relation to their neighboring frogs. We can do a quick check by noting that in our starting position, there were three empty vertices between each of our three frogs. And that is the same thing here. So this is equivalent to our starting position and we'll also call this S. Let's see if our frogs can hop in such a way that they have a um, different orientation. We can pick two of our frogs to hop closer to each other. For example, the frog at eight can hop to the seven and the frog at four can hop to the five. This leaves one empty vertex between the two of them. The frog that had started at 12 o'clock can either go to 11 or to one. And I think it's easy to see that in either direction, the frog at the top will be three vertices away from one frog and five vertices away from the other frog or vice versa, depending on which direction. But either way, these are equivalent positions. Let's call this type of arrangement A, where our three frogs are oriented so that there's one vertex between two, three vertex between two others, and five vertices empty between the remaining pair. We can end the game directly by having the frogs that are located at position seven and five both hop to position six and 11 can go in either direction. But in either case, this is this ends the game, so we'll call it F for finish. Since we're going to be calculating some expected values, let's pause for a moment and calculate some probabilities. The probability that we go from the starting point or from a, a starting orientation and returning to a starting orientation, that's if our three fogs either go one step to the right with probability one eighth, one half for each of them, or one step to the left with probability one eighth. So that's probability one fourth. The probability that we leave the starting position and move to a position that looks like A, we choose two of our frogs to be the frogs that jump to be closer together. And there are three ways to do that. And then our two frogs jump closer together. That happens with probability one half times one half or one fourth. We don't care what the third frog does. It can go in either direction, so that's probability one. So the probability that we go from position S to position A is 3 fourths, and we check to see that these two probabilities add up to one. Let's see where else our frogs can go from position A. Our two frogs that are closest together, they can hop away from each other from seven to eight and from four, I'm sorry, from five to four. And then we can have our frog that's further away at position 11, move one over to position 12. Checking, we see that our three frogs are now equally distant apart from each other, and this is the starting position. We can also have our two frogs that are closer together move one apart, again to eight and four, but this time we can have our other frog move in the opposite direction, so from 11 to 10. And checking, with one, three, and five vertices empty between our three frogs, we recognize this as position A. We've seen the resulting arrangements when our two frogs jump close together or our two close frogs jump further apart. Now let's see what happens when they travel in the same direction. For example, if they start at seven, five and shift to the right and end up at six and four, and let's make our top frog jump from 11 to 10 and see what kind of arrangement we have. This is also arrangement A. With our two bottom frogs at six and four, let's have our top frog instead jump from 11 to 12. One, three, and five again, so this is also A. Instead of our two bottom frogs hopping both to the right, let's have them hop, both of them to the left, to positions six and eight. And our frog that started off at 11 can go either to 10 or to 12. Let's figure out what these positions are. The one on the right is ori orientation A, the one on the left has empty vertices one, one, and seven between our three frogs. This is a new orientation for us, so let's call it B. So from position A, we can either have the frogs jump to the same vertex and finish the game. We can return to position A 
or we can have our frogs jump in such a way that we get to this position, position B. And now we're going to calculate the probabilities. In order to finish the game, our frogs located at 5 and 7 must jump together to meet in the center at position 6. That happens with probability 1 fourth. It doesn't matter which way our frog that was located at 11 goes. So this probability is 1 fourth. The probability of starting at A and returning to the starting position requires that our two frogs that are closest together each hop in opposite directions, and we have to have our frog at position 11 move up to 12. So this is 1 8th. In order to get to position B, we have to have both of these two frogs hop to the left, and then our other frog hops in the opposite direction. Again, this happens with probability 1 8th. We have shown four ways that our frogs can start in position A and return to an equivalent position A. Each of these happens with probability 1 8th, and there are four ways. So the total probability is 1 half. We check again and see that the total of these probabilities is also equal to 1. Let's see where we can go from arrangement B. One pair of our frogs can jump together for example, the frogs located at 6 and 8 can jump towards each other and end up together at vertex 7. And then 10 can go in either direction. This is another way to finish the game. This is equivalent to having the frogs located at 8 and 10 meet at position 9. And then 6 goes in either direction. But we'll, we'll count that up in our, we'll include that in our probability. Our frogs located at 8 and 6 can also shift in the same direction and end up at 7 and 5. The frog that was at 10 can move 1 to the right and end up at 11. This is also orientation A. When our two bottom frogs shift to 7 and 5, our top frog, instead of going to 11, can also go to 9. This is equivalent to orientation B. Let's calculate our probabilities. From B, we can either finish the game or go to orientation A or return to the same orientation. In order to finish the game, starting in position B, we have two choices of which pairs of frogs are going to end up at the same vertex. And then those two, jump, those two frogs jumping to the same vertex happens with probability 1 fourth, and then the third frog could go in either direction. So we finish the game from orientation B with probability 1 half. To get from B to A, we pick two of our frogs to move in one direction, and our third frog to move in the opposite direction. This is 2 times 1 eighth or 1 fourth. In order for our frogs to return to orientation B, they either all have to move in the same direction, either to the right or to the left. Both of those happen with probability 1 eighth, so that probability is also 1 fourth. And we see again that our three probabilities sub to 1. Now we're going to use these probabilities to calculate our expected value of frog jumps until the game is finished. Let ES be the expected number of jumps from the starting position. From the starting position, the frogs will all take one jump, so we add one to our expected value. To that, we add the expected values of the orientations that we can get from the starting orientation with their associated probabilities. Since the frogs can return to the starting position, we add the expected value of the frogs at that new starting position multiplied by probability 1 fourth. From the starting orientation, our frogs can also go to orientation A with probability 3 fourths, and then we add in the expected value from orientation A. From A, we calculate the expected value of the number of hops until the game is finished. We always take one hop from A. In the finished orientation, the expected number of hops there is zero because the game is over. So technically, this is probability 1 fourth times the expected number of hops from the finished orientation. With one half probability, we return to A. And when one eighth probability each, we return to the starting position or go to orientation B, and we add in those expected values. We do this once more from B. We calculate the expected value by adding one to the expected values of A and B multiplied by their probability 1 fourth. We don't worry about the finishing position again because we don't add any jumps after that. We'll stall for EB, and we'll substitute this into our second equation. We'll combine like terms and simplify and solve for EA. Now we'll substitute into our first equation, and we solve for ES again. ES is 16 thirds, so our answer is 19.